Ben Smythe, and uh, along with Ryan Foss, we are the Team Fuchsia. And uh, this is our frequency response section of our station. Um, first, we're going to go over constant, and well, really, we're just going to review the constant step response, and then we're going to go over what we did for the frequency. Um, here we have our station, um, and uh, the sensor for the temperature is actually down here um, next to the heater, which is, is a resistance heater right here. And the blower comes up through here, and these dampers remain closed throughout the entire thing. Um, we have an input uh, for power, and it's a percentage, and the output is in temperature in degrees Celsius. Um, so this is the I guess we um, we input a percentage from the computer. It goes to lab view, which tells the blower what to do, and then the temperature sensor tells us what temperature we receive, which it tells the computer, and then we um, model it with Excel. Um, for the constants, we have again we have the 45 to 50, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, and that's the outputs we're trying to receive. Um, by putting our inputs in, and then uh, we're going to go over the SSOC and the uh, comparison. Um, here's just an example of our steady state, and this is the region right here in which we consider steady. Um, here's our SSOC, and you, you can see we have a linear that it, this, these two sections have like a linear. Um, Trait, and then this has a different, it's like a different linear, so it's like it changes when it gets to 45. And we had, I think we told this last time, but we had a problem with this 45 to 50 range because it just didn't want to get down there. So. Um, here's um, all the sections just um, side to side so you can see, like the red is the um, it's 45 to 50, and you see it still didn't really reach down there. I mean, we got a couple, but um, then we have. Uh, 50 to 55, and then 55 to 60, which is the white. Um, then we moved on to step up and step down uh, modeling, and uh, I'm going to go over the examples, um, for, and I'm going to show you the limitations of the 45 to 50, and, and then the two fit methods we used. Um, here's a, an example of a step up, and. Um, as you can see, like it's temperature, so and then we're cooling it. So when our step up uh, goes, it's actually cooling it. So we have a negative gain on um, our step up diagrams. Uh, and this step down, same thing. We have an increase. Um, this is the um, the limitations I was talking about. The 45 to 50 degrees Celsius. Um, range, we had almost zero <laughs> um, response, so it, um, it just doesn't want to go any lower than about 50 degrees. Um, and this is the function that we're trying to model um, when we're modeling step functions, and uh, we have all these variables, um, um, the gain, dead time, first order time constant, and uh, these are deviation variables. And then this is the formula. Um, this is the fit two procedure um, for find or uh, to find the um, uh, delta C and delta M. We have um, the line going to the steady state, and then the line for the bottom of the output. Um, then this is an example of the um, time constant, uh, and then. An example of the dead time. Uh, this is the uh, the model for the, the curve, and we have the constants we use input, and as you can see, it just kind of goes along there and uh, fits it pretty well. Uh, <laughs> um, here's a comparison between um, the step up time constant and the step down. <laughs> Um, these are the different ranges right here, and uh, the different colors are the two different fit methods. So this is the fit two method, and this is the FOTDT. Um, as you can see, um, the step up, they're relatively close, and the same 
same thing for the uh, step down. Um, in both cases, the uh, FOP fee was actually higher. Uh, the gain, we have uh, uh, the same thing for the color. And um, they're relatively close on the step up, but um, they're a little bit closer on the step down. So. Um, and uh, for the dead time, um, we didn't have very much dead time uh, except for in um, the 55 to 60 range for the graphical method. Um, but both we were able to, uh, or I'm sorry, that's the only one we got to, 55, 50 to 55 is the only range where we got to match pretty close together. Um, but we didn't even have, like there was literally zero for the graphical method when we did uh, the step ups. So we could not get, like it was exactly matched, which is weird. Um, here's just um, all of them put together. and. Uh, uh, mainly, I just wanted to show the uncertainties, uh, how they are increasing as you go to the higher ranges, or, or no, sorry, it um, increases when you go to the FOPDT, and I think that's just because we ended up being more accurate, so like you see this increase to here, or, except for here, so. Uh, and then this is our frequent response, which is what we did this week, and I'm going to go over our pit method, and uh, the, there's a phenomenon where there's a deterioration of the sinusoidal output, and then I'm going to go over both plots, the pit method, and the constants. Um, here's an example of the pit method using the graphical one, and uh, here we have uh, uh, the change in M for the output, or I mean, sorry, the input, and then we have delta C, which is our output. And then we have our T, which is um, we use to find the phase angle and also the period. Um, this one was done at 0 0.018 hertz. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier, the deterioration of the output. It, um, uh, online, he, uh, Dr. Henry said that if the amplitude of the oscillations are less than twice the standard deviation of a constant uh, response experiment in the same like um, area, um, then it is it's negligible. So um, this is the amplitude. This is actually the last experiment we used as far as frequency. So this is the highest frequency we used in our our data, and um, it has an amplitude of like 0.25 degrees Celsius, which is extremely low. And this is actually one of the last ones where you can actually notice like an oscillation. <laughs> um, and the standard deviation for a same range uh, for the constant was only 0.52, so it was like way less. And uh, so even this is measurable, but you can s it's actually pretty close to our uh, ultimate frequency. So we kept it. Uh, this is an example of how it just kind of goes to whatever. It's like you can't even discern anything. It's just not really. Um, and I was wondering, uh, Dr. Henry, would it after a while, would it be considered constant? Okay. Um, here's the Bode plots, um, and it shows you how I found uh, the gain for this um, experiment, uh, ultimate frequency, and the order, and one over KCU. Um, and what we did was we found the phase angle at negative 180, brought it up for these variables. Um, here's the final uh, constants for um, mid-range, and we have um, these K, uh, sorry, the gain of 0.19, uh, KCU, and tau, and uh, the dead time, and the order is 2. And um, these are the equations we use to find dead time and tau, so, uh, and that is it.